Okay, in this video we're going to talk about aromaticity and really talk about what are the rules for determining whether a compound is aromatic or not. Okay, there are three rules or three criteria for determining whether a molecule is aromatic. Number one, it must have a delocalized cyclic ring of p orbitals. Number two, it must be a planar structure with all of the contributing atoms in the same plane. So all of these p orbitals must be in the same plane. And then rule three is it must have 4n plus 2 electrons, um, where n can be any integer 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Okay. This last rule is called Huckel's rule. Okay. So what that means is if n is 0, the value equals 2. If n is 1, the value equals 6. If n is 2, this value equals 8. So what Huckel's rule, Huckel's rule is really saying is aromatic compounds must have 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, so forth and so on, pi electrons. They have to have an even number of electrons that's not evenly divisible by 4. Okay, for something to be aromatic, it must meet all three of these criteria. Okay, if aromatic or if compounds do not meet these criteria, then they are not aromatic. And there's really kind of two options for things um, when they do not meet that criteria. Okay, so if something doesn't have rule one or doesn't have rule two, then we call that compound non aromatic. Okay, so that compound will be non-aromatic. If you break rule one or break tool, then the compound is non-aromatic. The other possibility is if you have a compound that follows rule one, follows rule two, but instead of having four n plus two electrons, if it has four n electrons, so 4, 8, 12, 16, if it has an even number that is divisible, then that compound is actually called anti-aromatic. Okay, that compound will be anti-aromatic. Okay, so there's really three classifications we can make for molecules. They can be aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic. Aromatic compounds follow rules 1, 2, and 3. Non-aromatic compounds don't follow rule 1 or they don't follow rule 2. And anti-aromatic compounds follow rule 1, follow rule 2, two but have 4n electrons. So that would be 4, 8, 12, 16. Okay, so now let's apply these rules to a couple of compounds. I have six compounds here. And what we're going to really do is go through an exercise of all these compounds to determine the number of conjugated electrons we have. Um, and then answer the question, is, are these compounds aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic? Um, so let's go through this exercise here. First, we'll start with benzene. So what I'm going to do is draw in my p orbitals. Okay, so obviously we have alternating double bonds. So we draw in our p orbitals. So this molecule does have a cyclic ring of p orbitals, as we can see. Um, it is a planar structure. All the contributing atoms are in the same plane. And for most of these compounds, we're going to assume that they are planar. And then we just need to count the number of conjugated electrons we have. So from each double bond, we can count the number of conjugated pi electrons. Here we have 2, 4, 6. So for this compound, we have 6 conjugated electrons. We do follow rules 1, 2, and 3. So this compound is obviously aromatic. Okay, so our first compound is aromatic. 
Okay, looking at our second compound, this is furan. What we want to do here is make sure that we draw in our lone pairs, and there's two lone pairs on that O. And now we need to look at our P orbitals. Obviously, we have P orbitals around our alkenes. We'll draw those in. And what we need to remember here is from our lesson in conjugation, when you have a lone pair next to a double bond, then one of those lone pairs is in fact in a p orbital. So we know we have a p orbital here. So looking at our rules, we do have a delocalized cyclic ring of p orbitals. This is a planar structure, and we just need to count our electrons. So counting our electrons, we have two from this double bond, another two giving me four, and then two from the lone pair. That again adds up to six electrons. Therefore, because we do follow rules one, two, and three, this compound is also aromatic. Okay? So that compound is also aromatic. Okay, looking at our next structure, let's go through this exercise again. So I'm just going to look at my p orbitals. Again, we need to draw in our lone pairs. So let's do that. The oxygen has two lone pairs. Okay, and let's look at our p orbitals. We have a p orbital here and here for the alkene, here and here for the alkene. And again, just as the previous example, one of these lone pairs is in a p orbital because it is next to an alkene. So looking at this structure, something that should stand out is I did not draw a p orbital at this carbon. Let's make that a little clearer. Okay, we have a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. So this carbon we see here is sp3 hybridized. What that means is we do not have a cyclic ring of p orbitals because we are not following rule 1. That is not um, applicable. It makes this compound non-aromatic. So let's still list the number of conjugated electrons we have, 2, 4, 6. So we do have 6 conjugated electrons, but because we don't have a cyclic ring of p orbitals, this compound is non-aromatic. So we'll just abbreviate that as non. Looking at our next example now, here we have a uh, butane ring, okay, with two alkenes. So let's go through this exercise again. Um, I have two p orbitals here, two p orbitals on the other side. So now we can kind of look through our rules. We have a cyclic ring of p orbitals. We can assume this is a planar structure again. And now let's count our electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4. So in this example, we have 4 electrons as part of the system. So now we can see that rule 1 is true, rule 2 is true, but now we have 4n electrons. Therefore, this compound is anti-aromatic. Okay, and one thing that we need to remember when we think about stability, aromatic compounds are extremely stable. Non-aromatic non compounds are not as stable as aromatic compounds. They're kind of our norm. Anti-aromatic compounds are extremely unstable. So while I drew this molecule here, okay, it is not a molecule that is stable at room temperature because it's anti-aromatic. Anytime you have a molecule that is anti-aromatic, it may exist for a very brief amount of time, but it's going to undergo some sort of reaction to break this anti-aromaticity, 
to become non-aromatic. So as drawn, this molecule is anti-aromatic, and basically it's not something that's going to exist in a bottle or something you can buy because it's so unstable, because it's anti-aromatic. Okay, let's look at our next example here. Okay, now we have a five-membered ring. We'll go through the same exercise. P orbital, P orbital, P orbital, P orbital. Now we have a anion on a carbon, okay, that is going to, again, go into a P orbital. If you have a lone pair next to a double bond, that will be in a P orbital. So what you should notice is this system looks a lot like this system here. If we can't count our electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six conjugated electrons. What about our rules? Delocalization, delocalized cyclic ring, yes. Molecules planar, yes. We have six pi electrons, yes. So this compound is in fact aromatic. Okay, so even though we have an anion, this compound is in fact quite stable because it is an aromatic compound. Now let's look at our last example, very similar. Draw in our p orbitals, one, two, three, four. And now, what do we know about a positive charge? A positive charge is an empty p orbital. So looking at our rules, cyclic ring of p orbitals, check. We can assume the molecule is planar, check. And now, how many electrons do we have in our system? Two from this double bond, another two from that double bond is four, and positive charge is an empty p orbital. So again, now we have four electrons, rule one, is followed, rule two is followed, and now we have four electrons, so that makes this compound obviously anti-aromatic. So again, just to reiterate, because this is anti-aromatic, this compound would not exist. Anti-aromatic compounds are extremely unstable, they will not exist for a long time. So even though I've drawn this compound here, this is a compound that is not going to be formed and is not going to exist. Okay? So these are basically the rules or the criteria for aromaticity. Okay? If you follow the three rules correctly, it's aromatic. If one or two is not followed, it's non. If one and two are followed, but you have four n electrons, then the compound is anti aromatic. Okay, so now let's scroll down here. Okay, so let's just uh, scroll down and zoom in a little bit. What I want you to do for homework is to do the same exercise we did with these three structures. So take this compound, this compound, and this compound. Determine the number of conjugated electrons in each of the systems, and then determine aromaticity. Write down whether these compounds are aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic.